I decided to re-record this video of the Wolfman movie because I think the first one wasn't communicated well and I want to do a great job with this one and also wanted to include important related information from a commenter, Catherine Bruce. The Wolfman starred Sir Anthony Hopkins, who is Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, who I covered in my last video titled Sir Anthony Hopkins. And in that video, and in others, I point out that the royal polytheists use certain people to carry forward their polytheist pagan Gnostic history and religion and art and, and film. Most of those people are educated at the Royal Academies, like Sir Anthony Hopkins. But before I do the movie review, I'm going to talk about the probable origin of the concept of the werewolf as it relates to Nephilim and the elite's polytheist pagan fallen angel mythos, similar to the vampire, both of which in mythos are referred to as shining ones. And I believe that it is relevant because this is the Genesis 6 conspiracy and the days of Noah, which I believe we are returning to just like Jesus said we would in the end times. And by the way, there is a new Wolfman movie coming out in 2024 starring Ryan Gosling, and that just gives more credibility to the fact that they will keep carrying their narratives forward. Alright, so let's get into the Nephilim history of werewolves. This is a statue of Romulus and Remus, and it's on display in the Vatican Museum. The Nephilim history of werewolves is likely related to the Dracians, or Dacians, who are a subgroup of the Thracians. The Dacians were a dark-haired Indo-Aryan giant tribe and were the offspring of human females and gods or demigods. The Dacians were present alongside the Scythians and the Etruscans. And all of these Indo-Aryan tribes are some of the oldest in Europe, originating from an even older Vedic culture, the Vedas Aryans. The Thracians, who resided in modern-day Bulgaria, Romania, and northern Greece, were culturally influenced by and mated with the Etruscans and the Scythians and the Celts. And this cultural association is determined by looking at the linguistic Indo-Aryan or Sanskrit origin of their languages of these ancient tribes, and also by looking at their gods. Thracians are named after the patriarch god Thrax, son of Ares. And Ares is the parent pre-flood god or fallen angel. And his Roman equivalent is Mars of the Etruscans. The Etruscans were the predecessor tribe of the Romans. And even though the Dacians were the warring tribe to the Etruscans, they likely would have interbred since they were all migratory and, as we said before, shared the same culture and language origin. And Romulus and Remus were Etruscan twins. They were the offspring of their mother, Rhea, who mated with the god Mars. And then Romulus and Remus in Mythos were raised by a she-wolf. So aside from that, let's get into the Wolfman or Wellwolf Nephilim connection from the movie and of the Dacians. The Gothic word dag or day means light or brilliant, which is also translated to Danu, like the Tuatha Danu, who are the shining ones or fairies and associated with the vampires and Scythian overlords. Here you see the Draco sigil, or banner, flown by the Dacians, featuring a wolf's head and a serpentine dragon-like body. I find that very interesting when you think about the Game of Thrones and how stark their animal representation was also the wolf. And the Game of Thrones is another one of their polytheist history narratives with actors and actresses who are actually royalty. But you see there, that looks exactly like the Dacian relief, almost as if they copied it. Other relations between the Dacians and wolves made by historians are 
Dacians draw their name from a god or legendary ancestor who appeared as a wolf. Young members of the community went through an initiation during which they lived as a wolf. They practiced a ritual that turned them into a wolf, and this transformation was related to lycanthropy. And lycanthropy is what the wolf man in the movie was supposed to be afflicted with, although it seems that Anthony Hopkins' character, Sir John Talbot, prefers his wolf nature and the transformation. A ritual imitation of the behavior and appearance of the wolf was practiced as a military initiation by the Dacians, and it was reserved to a secret brotherhood of warriors. And that sounds like a knighthood, and we'll get to that later with the Sir John Talbot's character's correlation to that. To become formidable warriors, they would assimilate behavior of the wolf, wearing wolf skins during the ritual. And that sounds like a skinwalker. Traces related to wolves as a cult were found in this area since the Neolithic period, including the Vinca culture. The ancient Vinca culture. Beliefs about werewolves and lycanthropy exist in other mystical religious beliefs regarding solidarity with the wolf by any means. And this movie is definitely taking it back to that religion, historically. In all the ways that I just described, which I think you will see as we get through it. I want to briefly mention the filming locations. Because they're mostly in Wiltshire, which is a very pagan location, which I've talked about before in other videos. And in Wiltshire, we have Stonehenge. We have the Temple of Apollo. We have the village of Blackmoor, which in the movie is supposed to be in Bulgaria, but it's actually filmed in Wiltshire, and this is it. Also in the movie, the manor home of the werewolves is this black or Chatsworth house in Derbyshire. And it's the actual home of the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. Another location is this, which is the Royal Naval College in London. That's the insane asylum they take Lawrence to, one of the characters. And as I go through this movie... I'm going to do a count of the references to elites and their bards because I want to show that there are a lot of them, a lot of references. So Sir Anthony Hopkins, who plays Sir John Talbot, who was a Knight of the Crown, and Sir Anthony Hopkins is a Knight of the Crown. He's number one. Also starring in the movie is this guy here, Sir Hugo Weaving. He's Order of Australia. And he's the detective in the movie. He also played Elrond in The Lord of the Rings, which is another retelling of their polytheist history. He played Agent Smith from The Matrix. He was in the For Transformers, so he's another actor example, and that's number two. But Sir Anthony Hopkins' character is the werewolf, but his name in the movie is Sir John Talbot, a reference to a historical knight from the 1300s. He was an English nobleman and a military commander during the Hundred Years' War, and he was an initial member of the Order of the Garter. Here he's shown with all the garters on his robe. And the Order of the Garter is a witch vampire coven established by King Edward III in 1348. So John Talbot is number three. And the movie begins with a poem by Sir John Talbot. And I'll quote it. It says, Even a man who is pure of heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolf Spain blooms and the autumn moon is bright. And wolf Spain is a poisonous plant known as the devil's helmet, and wolf Spain tipped arrows were also described in the Rig Veda. And this reference to poem is in a famous book titled The Talbot Shrewsbury Book which includes instructions for the Order of the Garter. And this book was historically presented by Sir John Talbot to the Queen of England, Margaret Anjou, a Merovingian bloodliner. Queen Margaret Anjou is reference number four. The book contains tales of Alexander the Great, Charlemagne, 
and knighthood originated with Charlemagne and King Arthur, so adding those three makes seven. One of the texts, The Knight of the Swan, is about Godfrey de Bouillon, who became the first ruler of the Crusader King of Jerusalem, otherwise known as the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar reference is number eight. So the Wolfman movie is set in the late 1800s, but Sir John Talbot is a historical figure from the 1300s, so they're carrying forward the persona from the 1300s to the 1800s and right into the present. Just like Sir John Talbot did in the book with the historical account of Charlemagne Alexander the Great and King Arthur. And in doing this with the narratives in literature, plays, and movies, they create a type of simulacrum. In the Book of Jubilees, it says, They made for themselves molten images, and they worshipped each idol, graven image, and unclean simulacra. And malignant spirits came and assisted and seduced them into committing transgression and uncleanliness. And a simulacrum is a likeness or imitation, especially of a god, which gives the image of these characters any energy in life, just like they do with statues and paintings, etc. The werewolf, played by Anthony Hopkins in the movie, was bitten by a boy infected with lycanthropy in India on a hunting expedition. He's also a nobleman with the manor and a servant who's also an Asian Indian. So these are more connections between the Indo-Aryan tribes and the older Vedic culture, the Indo-Aryan tribe of the Dacians. And this is Lawrence Talbot on the right, and he's the son of Sir John Talbot and an actor in a London Shakespearean theater in the movie. So Shakespeare, that's reference number nine. Lawrence becomes a werewolf after he's bitten by his father, and his father tells him that he's heir to his kingdom, so he really wants to pass down the wolfman bloodline. And where Sir John Talbot bites his son is here, among these standing stones, which looks like Stonehenge, and therefore he passes down the Nephilim bloodline gene in a stone circle. And these standing stones are typically a location where they invoke spirits. And then Lawrence heals himself after he's bitten, which is also a Nephilim trait of healing yourself. The killings of most of the movie take place in Blackmoor, which in real life is in Bulgaria, bordering Romania. So that's a reference to the ancient settlement of the Dacians. And then the rest takes place in London. A secret society reference is when Lawrence goes to a medium to find out what happened to his brother, who was also killed by his father, and mentions the elements of the crime couldn't be a coincidence. And then the medium says that there are no coincidences, only fate. But she plays a hidden hand. Sir John quotes a poem of Percy Shelley, the British poet who was educated at Oxford, and Percy Shelley's father and son were both knights, and he was also the husband of Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein. So that's reference number 10. And the poem quoted is called The Cloud, but the verse is about the moon personified, described as a she, coming from darkness to light. And here's the quote. That orbed maiden with white fire laden, whom mortals call the moon, glides glimmering o'er my fleece-like floor, and by the midnight breezes strewn. Lawrence in the movie finds a medallion on his dead brother's body, and it's of St. Columbanus, a Celtic monk, who was sainted by the Romans. So there's your Celtic connection, so that's number 11. And in the movie, they also keep referring to Yorick, an unseen character or demon of the court jester from Shakespeare. And that's reference number 12. Lawrence's love interest lives in London, and she's a Roman gypsy, as was Lawrence's mother, which mirrors the intermarriage of the Dacian and Etruscan tribes. 
but in the movie it's frowned upon for the noblemen of Bulgaria to mate with the Romans, and that's a mirroring of their warring against each other historically. But Lawrence stays with her for a while to try to heal, and her house is full of Roman gods, or simulacrum. Statues of so many ancient pagan gods are everywhere you look, but here you see Mercury and Diana. And I'll count all of those pagan gods as another reference, so that's number 13. And while she's researching to try to find a way to help Lawrence, she's reading about his disease, and she finds a book with a photo of Nebuchadnezzar as a gibberine, alluding to the idea that Nebuchadnezzar had lycanthropy also. And this photo that she found is from a famous painting by Blake, who is another Knight of the Crown, poet and bard who also paints creepy things for them. So I will count that as another reference, and that's number 14. But the reference to Nebuchadnezzar as a wolfman is significant, since Nebuchadnezzar's dream biblically personifies the beast kingdoms from Babylon onward and as a prophecy. So that's probably the most important reference, and that's number 15. So there are 15 references total in this movie that I could find, and there's probably more. So now I want to include Catherine Bruce's comment about Hitler as it relates to this also. And this is the comment. Germany's lycanthropic predilections rose to new popularity under Hitler's Nazi regime, with the Third Reich officials recalling images of the Germanic wolf in propaganda and commonly associating the term with their leading paramilitary groups, including the famed organization Werewolf. Hitler's name is itself a derivation of the animal, meaning Father Wolf a mammalian title he wore proudly, citing himself as a wolf on many public occasions throughout the war. And we know that Hitler was all about the Aryan bloodline, the ancient race of Nephilim, not white people. And in the movie, the villagers of Blackmore say that the Talbots are cursed, which you could apply that to the actual Sir John Talbot of the Order of the Garter night from the 1300s. Thanks for listening.